In early 2020, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, all schools over the world were mandatory closed and students began an online or remote learning. Many students perceived mathematics as one of the difficult core subjects to be learned. Due to pandemic, this negative thinking can be due to many factors that obstruct their mathematics learning. Mathematics has always been given special attention in school as the nature of the subject as related to many other fields and disciplines. This current study aimed to understand the difficulties encountered by grade 7 students in understanding mathematics and how face-to-face -face learning class better than online class and take note the possible impact of online class in academic achievement of the student. The following are the issues that need to be clarified, addressed, and improved upon. Number one, what are the common problems encountered by the grade 7 student in understanding mathematics? Number two, what are the pre-test and post-test scores of the two groups? Number three, is there any significant difference on the following performance? 3.1 pre-test scores of the two groups, 3.2 pre-test and post-test scores of the two groups, and 3.3 post-test scores of the two groups. And number four, what are the factors why students have difficulties in understanding mathematics? These are the statistical tools we utilize to analyze and assess the data. Mean, this was used to analyze the pre-post-test scores of the student difficulties in understanding mathematics. Standard deviation. This was used to tell how spread out the values are in given data set. It is measure of how far its observed value is from the mean. Kolmogorov is near no test. This normality test was used to determine whether the data set, including the pretest and post test, were from a no normal distribution. Independent sample t test. This statistical hypothesis test was used to determine whether control groups pretest post test is different from experimental groups pretest post test. Paired t test. This was used to determine if there is a significant mean difference between control and experimental groups paired score in the pretest and post test. So, here are the scoring guide to describe the performance in their pretest and post-test. Table 1 shows the scoring guide for pretest and post-test interpretation. So, scores from 1 to 15 falls in poor score, 16 to 30 is below average, 31 to 45 is average score, 46 to 60 is above average, and 61 to 75 is excellent. In this scoring guide, we will interpret the pretest and postest scores of the two groups based on their mean. Okay, let's now proceed to the results and discussion. The pretest and postest scores of the two groups. As shown on table 2, here are the mean and standard deviation distribution of the pretest and postest scores. So, the control and experimental groups pretest and postest are shown in table 2. The control group is scored 46.80 on the pretest, whereas the experimental group is scored 32.80. The big difference of 14 in mean scores indicates that the control group performed greater than the experimental group during the pretest. Furthermore, the standard deviation of the control and experimental groups differs slightly which indicates that the two groups were comparable in their scores in the pretest. Accordingly, both groups scored higher than 30 on the pretest, signifying that their scores are above average and average respectively. And according to Lee and Kung 2018, Online learning and face-to-face -face learning are both beneficial to math learning, but it is important to understand how students realize their math learning abilities. It is related to mathematics achievement. Furthermore, um, the control group continued to outperform the experimental group in terms of their scores in the post-test, attaining 
50.40 against 38.73 for the latter. The group's post-test mean scores are evaluated as above average for the control group and average for the experimental group, showing their good performance as seen on the increase of their mean score from the pre-test. According to Bong et al. 2003, the context of face-to-face -face learning where students can seek immediate learning inter interventions from teachers or their classmates who can help them with their learning and gain of higher test scores. Okay, next, um, tests of significant difference on the pre-test scores of the control and experimental groups. Table 3. Independent sample t-test results for the test of significant difference on the pre-test scores of the control and experimental groups. So, an independent sample t-test was used to determine the significant difference um, between the pre-test means of the control and experimental groups. So, table 3 shows a t-test with a t-value of 2.104 and a p-value of 0.044. The computed p-value was lesser than the value of the standard significance level of 0.05, showing a statistically significant difference between the pre-test scores of the control and experimental group of participants. Thus, we rejected the null hypothesis. So, the results means that the two groups did not perform statistically the same during the pre-test. And according to Krishnan 2015, students preferred the face-to-face -face learning mode for communication, discussions, understanding of mathematics concepts, and in improving their learning of mathematics. However, um, despite their inclination to the face-to-face -face learning mode, uh, more than half of the students believe that the mathematics courses should be taught in a hybrid mode or online learning. And the results of this study could be influenced by factors such as students' learning habits, um, the mathematics curriculum in schools prior to the students' post-secondary education, and the learning culture. Okay, let's now proceed to the test of significant difference on the post-test scores of the control and experimental groups. So, the significant difference between the control group's post-test and the experimental group's post-test means was determined using an independent sample t-test. So, Table 4. Independent sample t-test results for the test of significant difference on the post-test scores of the control and experimental groups. So, Table 4 shows that the big difference of 11.67 between the mean of the two groups post-test, um, the control group's mean is higher with a mean of 50.40 compared to the experimental group's mean with 38.73. And the table also shows that the computed p-value of 0.67 was greater than the value of the standard significance level of 0.05, revealing a statistically not significant difference between the post-test scores of the two group. Um, given by the evidence that the control group outperformed the experimental group, I, accept, I accepted the null hypothesis. Um, this means that face-to-face -face learning as a mode of learning is more effective than online learning. And the result supported the findings of West to Wies et al. 2013 when they discovered that the students in this study preferred the face-to-face -face learning mode. In particular, they are more comfortable interacting with their peers and the instructor in the face-to-face -face learning mode and they find the face-to-face -face instruction enables them to learn and understand the mathematics concepts better. Along with the findings, um, it suggests that having face-to-face -face learning as a mode of learning increases the learner's understanding mathematics more than having it through online learning. Okay, next, um, the test of significant peer difference on the pre-test and post-test scores of the Two groups. So, Table 5, per t-test result for the difference on the pre-test and post-test scores of the two groups. So, the researcher evaluated the null hypothesis that there is no significant 
difference between the participants' pre-test and post-test mean scores using the non-directional hypothesis test with a significance level of 0.05. Appeared sample t-test with p-values of 0.6. 02 and 0 0.3264 both the control and experimental groups revealed statistically no significant differences at p-value of 0 0.05 as shown in table 5 given that the mean post-test scores of 50.40 and 38.73 are higher than the mean pre-test scores of 46.80 and 32.80 there is sufficient evidence to accept the null hypothesis. There is no statistically significant difference between the two groups in terms of their test scores. This means that difficulties in understanding mathematics can occur to both face-to-face -face and online learning. In this case, um, learning mathematics depends on what strategies or how the teacher um, upskills mathematics lesson to the students. Um, research has shown the poor teaching stand out as one of the reasons for poor academic performance in mathematics. And according to Stuart 2000, concurs with the above assertion and state that poor academic performance in mathematics is traceable to poor or ineffective teaching. Studies done in America also made similar observation when they showed the poor mathematics achievements is attributed to classroom factors such as poor teaching methods. And according to Elliot et al. 2013. That ends our discussion. Thank you and God bless. But before that, we need to define what is SPSS in a simple words. SPSS is a short for a Statistical Package for the Social Sciences, and it's used by various kinds of researchers for complex statistical data analysis. The SPSS software package was created for the management and statistical analysis of social science data. SPSS is revolutionary software mainly used by research scientists which help them process critical data in a simple step. Working on data is a complex and time-consuming process, but this software can easily handle and operate information with the help of some techniques. To obtain the mean and standard deviation, pay attention and concentrate follow these instructions. Here the step or quick steps to get mean and standard deviation. Click analyze descriptive statistic descriptive. Drag the variable of interest from the left into variables back into the right. Click options and select mean and standard deviation. Press continue and then press OK. Result will appear in the SPSS output viewer.
However, to run the independent sample t-test, we need to follow the following steps. The first one was click analyze, compare means, independent sample t-test. Step 2, move the variable athlete to the grouping variable field and move the variable mile mean door to the test variables area. Step 3, click define group which open a new window. And step 4, click OK to run the independent sample t-test. How about normality test? How to do normality test using SPSS? Step 1. Select Analyze, Descriptive Statistic, Explore. A new window pops up. Step 2. From the list on the left, select the variable data to the dependent list. Click plots on the right. Step 3. The result now pop out in the output window. Step 4, we can now interpret the result. 